This Week in the Shop, episode number three. We made a valve cover. Before I get into all of the details and lots of pictures and videos of the completed 20 valve valve cover, first I want to go back to a couple of days ago over the weekend when I was actually machining the valve cover. I took quite a bit of footage so that you guys can see the process start to finish to go from a solid chunk into a billet 20 valve 4AG valve cover. Let's go into that. Because the fitment of the fixture into the valve cover for the second operation is pretty important, what I wanted to do was machine the fixture first so that when I get to the point after machining the top of the valve cover, I can double check the fitment of the fixture into the valve cover without taking the valve cover out. That way, if the mounting on the valve cover was too tight, I could just go back in and open up those holes and then double check the fitment on the fixture again. All of this without taking the valve cover out of the machine and possibly losing its original position. Each valve cover starts as a 40 pound chunk of 6061 aluminum plate. These are saw cut at the mill and then delivered to us. There's two of them here. The first operation is the top side of the valve cover. It starts by facing the top, and then I use a half inch end mill to rough out the shape. Then I'm gonna go back and finish it with some smaller tools and ball end mills for a nice finish. But let me show you. This is what it looks like after the half inch end mill has roughed out the shape of the valve cover. You can see all of the step lines down the front and sides of the valve cover that have to be surfaced with a ball end mill. This is a 3 8 ball end mill going over the top surface to smooth it all out. After about two and a half hours of machining, the top side of the valve cover is completed. A quick inspection to make sure that I didn't miss anything is done, and then I can check the fitment of the fixture for the second operation. This was programmed to have a one and a half thousand slip into those bores and it fits nicely. So no changes are needed before I can flip this all over and start on the second operation. So now that I know that the OP2 fixture fits into the valve cover really nicely, we can go ahead and start setting up the second operation. But once the valve cover is bolted onto the fixture, I'm not gonna be able to pick up my locating hole in the center of the fixture. So what I have to do is I have to locate the fixture in the vices first, then I can indicate the fixture with my probe, and then I can put the fixture and the valve cover back in and start machining the second operation. But to ensure that I locate the fixture in the same position after I take it back out again after probing it, I need something to locate its position, and that's how we use these stops here. So a stop is just a physical device that is used to locate something. So this is bolted to the back of the vise, comes around the side, and its position is adjustable. So I'm just gonna set it so that it bumps up against the side of this fixture, and it's gonna clear the valve cover once the valve cover's in place. And that way, when I unbolt the vise to take the fixture out so that I can put the valve cover on the fixture before I put it back in the machine, it locates back into the same place again, and I don't have to pick up that hole a second time. After probing the board, then I need to set my Z position, which is gonna be this surface here, same on the back side, which was the very top of our valve cover, which was our Z0. The second operation, the bottom of the valve cover, starts by facing the top, and as I mentioned in the last video, I cut out the groove for the gasket using a very small eighth inch flat end mill. The next tool up is a 3 8 flat end mill to rough out the inside. The reason that I rough the inside with a 3 8 end mill instead of the half inch like I did on the outside is because all of the internal corners of the valve cover were designed to use the 3 8 end mill. If I had used a half inch end mill, all of the fillets on the inside of the valve cover would have been too large and probably would have had some clearance issues around the areas that it fits tightly. Here it is roughed out. Just like the top side, then I go back in with a 3 8 ball nose that's sticking out pretty far and I go and I surface all of the features on the inside of the valve cover. When I was designing this, I wanted to make it as smooth and as nice as possible on the inside, even though you're not really gonna see it.
The cycle time on the inside of the valve cover is about double what it is on the outside. That mostly has to do with all of the small tools that are used to surface all of the little features on the inside that don't exist on the outside. So after finishing a long program like this one, I wanna first inspect the part before removing it out of the machine because I want to catch anything that could still be fixed or machined before I take the part out. That way I know it's exactly in the same position as it was. So some of those things would include looking for any areas that are supposed to be chamfered or cleared out that are not, that I can go back and fix. And then another thing to check for is any critical measurements that need to be adjusted. For example, the gaskets that go inside of here that seal around the spark plug tubes is probably the only real critical part of the inside of this valve cover. And so I'm just gonna double check those bores because if they're undersized, it's easy for me to go back in and open them back up again. But if I reload it, there is a slight chance that it's not gonna be exactly where it was. And so after checking these bores, they're about one and a half thousandths over nominal, which is okay, but I would like to hold it on plus or minus one. The gasket will probably still install perfectly fine because it has a rubber lining around the outside of it, but just one thing to adjust for the next one. Aside from that, I think everything looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to check the gasket fitment just to be sure, but the gasket grooves all came out pretty nice. Um, Overall, after almost four hours of machining on the inside of this, I'm very happy with the way that it came out. So let's get it out of the machine and take a good look at it. So here we are, months of concept, drawing, designing, 3D printing, test fitting, making changes, programming, setting up, and running the part leads us to this right here, our finished prototype. The finished prototype, surprisingly, went without any hiccup at all. All of the programming was fine, only a couple of very small changes need to be made to optimize cycle time, speed things up a little bit. I'm really not gonna change much. But let's get into all of the small things that I like about the valve cover and the one or two very small details that I might change when we go from prototype into production. So first things first, let's just take a look at all of the small details on the valve cover, even some of the stuff that I mentioned when I was doing the programming, like the step down on the side. Let's get a closer look. So you can see what I was talking about on the waterline step down, how towards the top of the valve cover, the step over would be further than, as it gets further down the side of the valve cover, the step down is less noticeable. Am I gonna change it? I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna do much to it. One thing that I did notice is that the very first step is pretty far over on the top of the valve cover here. And so what I'll probably do is I'll start that tool path at the depth of this first step right here. And this will just get rid of this one line that goes along the top here. The next thing that I noticed was the surface finish on the side of the valve cover. So overall, the surface finish is really nice on the valve cover. But one thing that I did see was, let me see if I can capture this. This is something that happens uh, when surfacing from a roughed state on the valve cover. It's very hard to see, but there are a couple marks along the top surface here and what these are, are areas where the tool was rubbing instead of cutting. Let me see if I can get it. Where it's not perfectly shiny. There's a couple of like small imperfections in the surface. Now, this has a lot to do with the fact that the tool that I was using to do the surfacing had to be long enough to be able to surface down around this edge here. And so when it's digging into the top of the valve cover, which actually has the most <clears throat> rough stock that it has to remove, it's probably vibrating a little bit and not leaving the best finish. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna add a surfacing tool path that roughs this top surface with a shorter tool that's stronger. And that should leave a better finish just on this leading edge right here. Let's take a look at the gasket groove on the inside. So overall, I'm really happy with the waterline tool path that surfaced the inside of this gasket groove. I'm not gonna do anything with that. The gasket I'll show you actually fits really good into this groove. One thing that can be tough to see when you're doing a simulation before you run an actual part is the opportunity for burrs to be left on the edges of areas that are cut. For example, doing surfacing along the edges, say like around here, 
sometimes that tool is going to actually kick up a burr on this top edge, which is exactly what happened. And so what I'm going to have to do is I'm either going to have to go back in and add a bigger chamfer on this edge that the ball nose can surface, or I might even go back in with a chamfering tool and just chamfer this edge by creating some geometry that just follows that curve. One other thing that I noticed was as I was contouring around these bosses, these bosses here are going to be what holds the baffle in place. It's going to be very difficult to see this, but let me see if I can zoom in. There's a little bit of material in between this boss and this fillet here that's still standing up. I don't know if you can see that below my finger. And that should have been cut away when I was contouring around the boss to finish that diameter and it didn't cut it. So I'm going to have to go in and see why. I still have this tiny little section right there. The reason that that's important is because if there's any little area that's popping up there, when I go to install the baffle, it won't seat all the way down. And that could potentially lead to the baffle rattling or other small issues like that. So here's the 3D printed baffle laid in place. One thing that I want you guys to notice is that the tops of these bosses protrude only about 20 thousandths through the baffle. And then I actually spot drill the tops of them. I Previously, when I was installing baffles on the 16 valve valve covers, I was using a center punch to create a spot, and then I was swedging those bosses down. And what that does is it mushrooms the top of the boss, and it holds the baffle in place. OEM kind of does the same thing. They use like a rivet that squeezes together and holds it in place. But I think this is a very uh, simple solution. You don't have to worry about hardware backing out, falling out, landing in your valve train, and causing damage. So this is a permanent installation and not something you're going to have to worry about. But let's take a look at the front here. I am going to have to make a couple of changes to the design here. For whatever reason, in the uh, CAD design, this looked like it fit great. But as you can see, uh, the machine part doesn't always match up perfectly with the solid model. So I'm going to have to go back in and adjust this contour a little bit and get some clearance here at the bottom so that it clears the floor correctly. The last thing I'm going to go over before I pop this on the engine, you can see the fitment on the engine, is the coil mounting. So these are the little coil adapters that are going to be included with the valve covers. And what these do is uh, the spark plug wires are designed to fit around this boss that stands up here. But when you mount the coils inside, the coil doesn't sit flush. It actually sticks up a little bit higher. So to fill up that gap, this coil adapter is going to go in here. Let me show you the details of this. So there's a fillet along this edge, which is a radius that ramps up. And to get this to fit snugly, what I had to do is I had to surface the inside edge with a mating fillet. Let's see. So the inside of this is surfaced to match the fillet here. And what that gives you is, let me see if I can show you. As it slides over, it locks into place. So this boss locks into its position here so that you don't have to worry about, oh, did I align it correctly? Is it, are they gonna not look all the same when they're mounted? Like is one gonna sit crooked and the other's gonna sit straight? That surfacing ensures that they are going to basically look like it's part of the valve cover when it's all bolted together, which is what I was going for. And again, if you just want spark plug wires, you don't want to run coils, you just don't run these, and nobody knows the difference. Let me see if I can show you guys the gasket fitment, because it's actually pretty good. So installing the gasket, if you look at the gasket, it actually has, let me see if I can see this. The sides are actually tapered a little bit, okay? And when you install the gasket, it's going to start easily because it's narrower on the edge. And then as you press it in, it's going to become firmer. It's gonna become a little bit snug. And this is going to be a part of what helps seal the valve cover. If you've watched, for example, our beams oil pan install, and you watched how I installed the O-ring on that oil pan, installing the valve cover gasket on a 20 valve valve cover is similar. So you're going to vertically press in the gasket just from the top.
And then after the gasket is pressed in this way, then you're gonna sort of rub your thumb along it just to feel if there's any bumps or high spots or areas that haven't seated down all the way. And when you find a high spot, you're just gonna push that spot down. Make sure the gasket is all the way in the groove. But overall, gasket, gasket fitment's really good on this. I'm, I'm not gonna change any of it. And here it is. The valve cover all mounted up on our mock-up engine. Overall fitment is basically exactly how I want it. All of the fitment of the spark plug tubes, the mounting studs for the grommets, the valve cover gasket, the fitment on the front flange area, the timing cover, everything is pretty spot on. So I'm not gonna make any changes to that. The only changes I'm gonna make are strictly cosmetic, some small stuff, and then we got to get this thing on a car and do some real testing. So that's probably what's going to happen next week. So see you guys next week.